Good evening, good afternoon, good night. Thanks for joining us at West of Nowhere. See you later. JK. <laughs> I'm Levi. <laughs> I'm Shane. And I'm pretty sure you stole that from somebody. Good uh, afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon, good yeah. night. From a movie. Can you name the movie? Is it Good Morning Vietnam? No, what the Damn fuck? It. No, he says Good Morning <laughs> Vietnam in that movie. But he, he says other random shit, too. Yeah, that's true, but he doesn't say that. I'll give you a hint. It's got Jim Carrey in it. Bruce Almighty. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Truman Show. You ever seen that? Yeah, like yeah. maybe twice. Wow, that's a good movie. It's okay. It actually speaks to uh, our society, uh, how we're obsessed with the intimate lives of other people on the television. I was I was making fun of people there. That that's not how I actually feel. Anyway, yeah, all right. That's that's a quote in that movie. So check it out. <laughs> that's it's a quote in that movie. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Is this the Truman Show episode? You want to talk about the Truman Show, like when it came out, who starred no. in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Are you sure? We could, but I don't want to. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? I do want to talk about your mother. Oh, Whoa. fucking yeah. bird. Definitely not. Um, All right, come on. <laughs> the Patreon people. The Patreons? All right, gotcha. Let's see. We want to thank Adam Pacino, Tony Burgess, Miles Glenn, Sam Norton, Colby Jordan, Jade Marsh, Natalie Tacarante, Mark Stadler, and Colton Zamersla. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for something fun. I wasn't ready. Yeah, Dude, that's what right. You... His name I is liked your one anyway. last week. Like... Jack Hammer sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I can't. The problem is, is I can't really think of like well-known noises. You know what I mean? Like oh, I could, man. I could rattle off like random jet noises, but only we'd find those funny, and people would listen True. would just be like, "You're yeah. stupid." I'm surprised so. he didn't do like the dial-up sound or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to way to ruin it. Uh, you could do that next time. No, Nobody. now it's it's gonna be in this episode. Can't do it. Oh. Good job. What a fucking I'll, ruin it. I'll give you my ideas off off <laughs> record audio next time. Obviously, come on. Jeez. What are you uh, new to this? Yeah. <laughs> um, how was Washington? Dude, it was great, man. Um, yeah. Emmett turned six. Hell yeah. Uh, so I got there right, and I was like, dude, you're small for. I feel like you're small for a six-year-old. And then we went to a party full of six-year-olds, and he's, he's normal size. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> also, six-year-olds are terrible at bowling. Like, yeah, well, the worst. Yeah. Like, the ball weighs half as much as they do. Dude, they have, like, six-pound balls. What do you oh, mean? Oh, that's true. Yeah, my perspective on six-year-olds is not great. Like, my, yeah. my only frame of reference is my niece, and she's tiny so like yeah you know she's just a really small kid for her like my nephew is two and she's six <laughs> like he's catching her real quick <laughs> like he's, yeah. he's a big boy and she's small like so it's it's really funny when she picks him up because it's like that's like two-thirds of your body weight lady like your fucking <laughs> squat ratio is amazing right now <laughs> just keep that up you'd be fucking Breaking records in no time. Right? Don't ever give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you had a good time. Did you uh, Did you listen to the episode with me and Mark? Marky Mark. I did listen to it on like a long drive to Seattle because I had to take Emmett's grandma to uh, Seattle to catch a flight. So I was able oh, to listen yeah. to it. And Mark's <laughs> just so dang beautiful, you know? He's just... I know. Don't you hate it? You just you just got to ignore the fact that he has that like really high pitched girl voice, you know. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> he's super self conscious about that too. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Well, he's told me stories where he'll be 
because he's a nurse, he'll be calling other like areas of the hospital, and they'll be like, and he'll, you know, he's a nurse, so they're yeah. like, oh, that that one lady nurse, and he's like, no, that was fuck, that was me, God damn it, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mark, it's all right. He's a super Poor smart Mark. guy though, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty smart. He's all right. Yeah. He's, he's not. Right. He's not as good as me, but he, yeah. he'll he'll do for a fill in. You know, he definitely doesn't talk as much as you do. Hey, that's the <laughs> reason why we do this show. <laughs> Just so I can talk on and yeah. on and on. Oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> You're like the. The one guy that's always on the Howard Stern shows that just kind of like, or the lady, I guess, too. It was just like, yeah, totally. And then it's just Howard Stern talking for three hours. Yeah. I mean, we, I have a part to play. Yeah. You're like Jamie, <laughs> Jamie on the Rogan. The Rogaine. I talk more than him. That's true. You talk way more than him. But, well, and he's also never by himself, though. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't listened to Joe Rogan in a long time. Me either. Yeah. Not not seeing a lot of cool stuff coming out of it. I'm, I'm on his subreddit at least once a day, and I'm like, yikes, okay, well, not really missing a whole lot. So it's like just like, like a cir- circle jerk of stuff he already has said a billion times. It's like, okay, like how many more times do I need to listen to him say these things? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if you think about it, man, like it's got to be hard to have a podcast as long as he's had True. and not repeat yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe the problem is, is I was just listening to too much of it. Maybe I should do like one, one a month. Because chances are, well, actually, there's been a couple times, and this been a while ago, but when I was listening to him pretty, pretty regularly, yeah, he'd like say something, and then he'll say it again in another episode. He'd be like, "I forget who I was talking about or talking to." And I was like, "Bitch, that was like a week ago." Well, he <laughs> doesn't. He still put out like an episode, like a every two days. I don't know how frequently he does them. I feel like there he puts out he puts out a lot of them. Like he records yeah. con- almost constantly. I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. I don't know. I don't know how the fuck he does it. He must hate sleeping. He was my introduction to podcasts for sure, and then I definitely switched over to Two Bears One Cave, and then uh, Time Suck with Dan Cummings. Yeah, like see you, me, and Mark all this time. So I got Mark on it too. I like what it. you you heard, but I did hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> pretty I'm, awesome. I'm fucking balls deep and probably confusing at least three people on Facebook because of all the friends that I've added that all have the same picture of Dan as their profile picture. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's Dan Sember. <laughs> so I've added, I got like 300 more friends because of it. It's so ridiculous. Like I just put him as my profile picture. Yeah. And then like just crazy amounts of friend requests. It's hilarious. So right now I have 666 friends. And I think that's hilarious. And I don't know how how far you've gotten into the catalog, but there's one episode. I don't even remember which episode, but he talks about um, the band Striper. And... Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> and then he just keeps bringing it back up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I, I posted the, the Cult of the Curious uh, Facebook group. I was like, man, I'm only because I was at 662. I was like, I'm at... I'm four friends away from never being accepted into any Striper fan group on Facebook ever. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Speaking of Jesus people, uh, <laughs> you know who Joel Osteen is? Yeah, dude. He's like that insanely rich preacher. Yeah. I, uh. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, there's a show that came out a while back called the. It's like the Holy... Some, it was like a show on HBO about really rich priests, and I feel like they, when they made that show, when they were writing it, they thought of him. Probably, yeah. So, in 2014, um, there was uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars stolen from a safe of one of his churches Yeah. in Lakewood, uh, Texas, or like outside of Houston. And $600,000 in a safe at a church, first of all, little suspect i mean like why do you can't use a bank like i know churches have a lot of money but like there's not a christian bank that you can use 
I mean, that could yeah. have been, to be fair, that could have been after like one of their big gatherings where they pass around the whatever. True. And it could True. have went straight from the collection to the safe and it was just in between like True. days. Okay. So, okay. update. Ooh. There's some uh, some renovations going on in the church. And okay. And a plumber was doing some work at this church. No. Nah. And disconnecting uh, or opening up a wall, some wall panels. And, he and found guess money what was in, in the there? Wall. Money. Fuck ton of money in the wall. Fuck ton. Just um, a bunch of money in envelopes, a bunch of checks. Uh, and um, the, they haven't released an estimate of how much is actually uh, found. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, on the surface, it look kind of looks like somebody faked that they uh, got robbed and then hid it in the money of the church. The money in the walls of the church. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, well, I, I mean, it happened in 2014 and the money's still there. That tells me that it wasn't somebody who was, like, legitimately trying to steal this money. Because why would they put it back in the church? And never come back for it. You know what I mean? So, it, it, I don't know, devil's advocate again. Someone who works in the church did that, and then they were like, if I hide it in the walls and just wait, you know, then yeah. I can go back for it a couple years True. from now and True. collect the money and no one will be the wiser. Right. That's a, that's a good, you would think that the church would, you know, I don't know, pay a little attention to who's sneaking off. They either they don't have a secure. I know they have a security system because when the fucking hurricane went through Houston, they locked that bitch down. Said no homeless people. Sorry, fuck you. Really? <laughs> yeah. You don't remember that? I didn't know anything about that. No. Oh yeah, yeah. They uh, they locked the doors. Would were not taking anybody into the church, even though the church was completely untouched by flooding. It's like yeah, we're you know it's it's not safe for people to come in here. It was the excuse they made. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I mean, that's a it's a church for rich people, okay? And if you're homeless, yeah. clearly you don't have money, so please go away. Yeah. You can't give us your money that we can later then steal from ourselves and hide on the walls. Exactly. So fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Joel <laughs> Joel Steve was in California at some kind of restaurant, and um, a random person, you know, try to get a selfie, like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's yeah. like, you know that fucking batific smile that he's famous for where he's squinting the whole time and uh <laughs> this guy was like you know you're a piece of shit right yeah <laughs> Ooh. and he just smiled and walked away and then the guy was like he knows <laughs> <laughs> he knows he knows oh man anyway so apparently joel Osteen, um fucking lost his shit and was like calling the restaurant that this guy worked at um repeatedly and got the kid fired <laughs> which is i mean you know you kind of you're kind of risking that for anything like if you're going to do something like that you know you kind of yeah. kind of going to risk your job but i think it was worth it <laughs> 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 maybe joel steen says he's a good christian man he can give him some of that wall money you know I don't think sweet, anyone thinks that Joel seems a good Christian man. That sweet bulkhead scratch, you know what I'm saying? Just that, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Navy joke. <laughs> <laughs> Boat walls. <laughs> oh, man. So I just thought that was really funny. Um, but that guy's that people have already set up a GoFundMe for that guy that got fired. Like, everybody obviously gives a shit more about him than... Anybody gives a shit about fucking Joel Stein in this in this exchange specifically? I mean, I just don't get it though. Like, I I remember because uh, you know if you live in a small town for a long time, you only had four channels. Yeah, through the antenna, and then on Sunday mornings you get the televangelist preacher guys, and they'd have the call in number. You call in and donate money. Yeah, and all this shit. But then, like, you see the guy, he's got a fucking Ferrari, he's got a crazy, insane, massive house, and there's there's people that are like, well, books. Like, okay. 
I don't think it's just books. Like, look at Stephen King's house, man. Like, <laughs> you're telling me this guy's just like, self-help books is the reason God wanted me to have a million-dollar car, you know, or a fucking 15, 16 million-dollar mansion that, you know, I probably don't even pay fucking property taxes on because, ta- I don't know, fuck, I don't know the rules, but <laughs> seems fucked up. <laughs> Dude, I definitely think that churches like that, those mega churches that, like, for instance, Joel Olstein has, like, made millions off of and, like, lives a very easy life because of it, those yeah. churches should, should 100% pay taxes. Like, your everyday side-of-the-road church where, like, the, the preacher, like, literally works another job when he's not, like, at church, you know, yeah. doing his thing on Wednesdays and Sundays, those dudes, I understand why they don't pay because they're not, they're, they're making enough to keep the lights on to... To have services on those days. Like, yeah. That dude's like, filthy rich because he doesn't like, have to pay taxes. Well, it's like him, and then there's that Kenneth Copeland guy. Uh, you prob- you've you seen him in videos. He's the one that looks like the devil. Like, he's the creepiest <laughs> old man. He He's fucking scary looking. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, bought Tyler Perry's old jet. Private jet. And he's like, well... You know, he just made me such a sweet deal that I just I just had to buy it. You know, I just had... And it's still, like, it's a used jet, but it still was, like, multi-million dollar jet. Like, it's not like he was like, I'm a good Christian, you're a good Christian, here's this jet for ten bucks, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Like, he, he still paid a fuck ton of money. <laughs> and, 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 like, the videos of that guy creep me the fuck out. He's the one that's always screaming... In the microphone, like he's yelling about COVID. COVID nineteen, you go away. I command you. That fucking guy. I think you spend too much time on the internet. Probably. This is this is what he looks like. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't look scary, right? Yeah, he's pretty scary. Yeah, I do spend too much time on the internet. But <laughs> where would this show be if I didn't? You know what I mean? Like. I think you know what we we'd have to find some other way to waste an hour of our life once a week. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> More video games. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um. Well, we're gonna keep on the uh, Christian theme for a minute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um. So you know, New York City's really big on their gigantic Christmas trees, right? Right. Yeah. So they got that one huge one. Which I don't know where it is located, but it's like a big fucking deal. Well, the Fox News um, block is called the Fox Square, and they have a giant Christmas tree too. Right. And they call it the All American Christmas Tree. Yeah, yeah, it's the American one. And a homeless man lit it on fire the other day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so just a fucking typical. New York homeless guy, because there's a fuck ton of them, um, <laughs> lit this guy on fire and then got, or lit the Christmas tree on fire and then I guess was apprehended pretty quickly afterwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like the reaction is probably one of my favorite parts because like there's all the Fox and Friends, Fox News hosts that are all like, this is what we're talking about, the fucking war on Christmas, dude. Like, see? Got people just burning down Christmas trees because they hate Christian stuff. Like, they just fucking hate it. Not not the possibility that it was just a fucking crazy guy yeah. that was homeless and was like, I'm going to light stuff on fire. <laughs> but they, like, tried to spin it into a... Uh, oh, well... I mean, we, I can't finish unless something's on fire, so I get it. Yeah, no, same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> talk about how, you know, this is the... The rampant violence that's escalating in this country all over the place. No city safe, no person safe. Everybody's, you know, in danger now. This is this is Biden's America, and it's scary. It's scary out there. Meanwhile, it's nowhere, like, crime isn't nearly anywhere near where it was, at, at least in the 90s. Like, it's not, it's not not safe. It's just there's some shit going on. People been cooped up the last fucking year. People are crazy. What do you want? One of the things I did find hilarious was one of the Fox and Friends uh, hosts, a uh, lady host. She's uh, she said that it was the guy was a Scrooge. 
Ooh. Scrooge for burning down this Christmas tree. Now, I want to dissect this a little bit because this uh, Fox News host, who I'll go out on a limb and say she makes a couple dollars a year. You know, a couple. She, yeah, just a couple. Probably reasonably wealthy. Is calling the homeless man a Scrooge. <laughs> what? What the, what are we doing, man? Like, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> this homeless guy who doesn't have a fucking place to live is obviously a Scrooge because he hates Christmas. Not to mention the actual version or like thing of Scrooge definition, which is people who would prefer money and profits over being nice to people in the holidays, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Overworking people and shit like that. So, I think that was in poor taste. <laughs> I mean, she definitely used it wrong, but, you know, I mean, we, we we all know what she meant. Like, she just meant he was a Scrooge in the fact that, like, obviously he hates Christmas, so he's Scrooge. And people, I, I, feel, yeah. I feel, like, associate, like, hating Christmas with Scrooge. Yeah, Some people, I mean, I don't I mean, think he actually hated Christmas. I just think he wanted to light something on fire. Yeah, yeah. But I just thought it was funny. He, it was probably <laughs> cold. Probably. Fucking, <laughs> no fucking insulation outside. It's weird. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, speaking of people making a victim of themselves. Uh, oh, okay. Juicy Smollett. Remember him? Dude, how do you say her his name? <laughs> I Ugh. think that's how you say it. Juicy. Juicy. Juicy? I thought it was. Juicy. I thought it was Smollett. Oh, uh, could be Smollett. I don't know. Juicy Smollier, as the great <laughs> Dave Chappelle calls him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, he got found guilty on uh, numerous charges um, for faking his supposed assault in 2019. He finally got charged with that. Sh- like, God, yeah. I mean, it took long enough. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm sure it got pushed back and pushed back last year. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With COVID and everything, so yeah. <laughs> uh, paces uh, as it stands. Uh, one of the charges uh, he faces possible prison time, and then another one's just a misdemeanor charge of false reporting an incident. But that was dropped after completing a therapeutic program that addressed racial bias. <laughs> <laughs> so. Pretty funny that this he got arrested for being a bad actor, basically, is what, what it boils down to. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? He he knew the guys. He had a relationship with one of them, apparently, as it came out. Like, you couldn't have planned this worse. Like, unless you were <laughs> literally standing in front of a camera just punching yourself in the face, a la Liar Liar. Or, yeah. Yeah, Liar Liar. And Jim Carrey. Then we're like, ah, somebody jumped me. They're like, dude, but fuck it. Here's the footage, bro. Like, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just, uh, poor guy. <laughs> poor guy that brought it all on himself, you know? Yeah. It's a really dumb, dumb move to do. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what even it, like, he hasn't said anything, like, as to what inspired him to do that either, you know? Yeah. And I'm really curious. Like, I can't wait for the documentary about it, because it's going to be really interesting. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Where you're like, this is a good idea. And I don't even, like, he was on a popular show. He's on that Empire show. Yeah, yeah. It's It's not like he was, you know, uh, doing poorly. Like, he didn't need to do anything... To like stand out or anything like that, like I didn't think, but maybe he did. I don't. Know. It really sucks because like I feel like in a time where like the, where like there was a lot of like actual fucked up things going on to people of color, he tried to like cash in on the wave of like oh like I'm I'm also like being hurt and affected like being hurt by like yeah. ignorant people, yeah, and I and that's the type of shit that like makes a movement to bring awareness to shit like that that's it brings it yeah. down. Like it's yeah. you in the end you did nothing for it and you made yourself look bad and then now when future things happen like that, there's gonna be that tinge of doubt from people. Yeah. Because of it. And that Yeah. 
yeah, you basically just shit on like a bunch of progress that people were trying to make. Yeah. And yeah. And especially where they were like, or where he was trying to uh, blame a specific group of people, where he's trying to blame Trump people. Yeah. Where they were like, this is MAGA country or whatever the hell they said to him. Like, you're now, you're now targeting a specific group with a fake narrative. And that now, like, now that's going to be used as ammunition for whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's like, you just took, like, a bunch of giant steps backwards for trying to make things more uh, cohesive as society. Like, nobody's going to be more likely to be united because of some dumb shit fucking plan that you hatched to whatever you were trying to do. Like, I still don't get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just, it was just to be in the line, like literally yeah. just for 15 minutes of fame. That didn't make any sense. Cause you're already yeah. popular. Like people know who you are. You're on a very right. popular show. It was stupid. Yeah. It was just for an, an attention grab. Yeah. The backfired. So fuck him. Yeah. Yep. So maybe <laughs> juicy Smollier could, uh, you know, benefit from the use of this next story. Ooh. Switzerland has uh <laughs> has uh been in talks to basically legalize a suicide pod. Dude, so, <laughs> I fucking seen that. That is, is the it? that is the craziest shit, dude. So I mean, if you're a big, big fan of Futurama, hey man, future's <laughs> now. <laughs> It's crazy because uh, uh, during the 18 deployment, I actually met a female doctor who specialized, like she specialized in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, me and a couple of my buddies like met a couple and her and her husband were like vacationing and it was, we were in Crete. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and that's what she did. She just, she did like assisted suicide. Yeah. And I thought that was so wild. And then now, now there's these pods. Yeah. I should I should really message her and ask her about what she thinks about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um position assisted suicide is a pretty hot button issue at least in Amer- in America. There's a lot of countries in Europe where it's like not really um targeted as negatively as it is here, um but there's also some other countries in Europe where it's like what? No. But Switzerland is one of the countries where they're like, yeah, if you want to fucking, you know, have a medically assisted suicide because of whatever reason, then you're good to go. Um, and so this pod, the company, um, has found that the machine doesn't break any of the laws in Switzerland. Um, so now there's going to be a couple, you know, follow ups on people trying to. A couple to, trial like, runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so how the machine works, bet you're curious. Um, yeah, I am, actually. So it's, in in a normal uh, assisted suicide in Switzerland, uh, it's basically just liquids that, it's like getting the death penalty in America where they you know, Yeah, you get put you to up. sleep, yeah. Yep, put you up with some stuff. But um, the pod, what it does... Uh, flooded with nitrogen, reducing your oxygen levels rapidly. Uh, you lose consciousness and die approximately in 10 minutes. Oh, so wow. basically, it just completely depletes your oxygen levels, which pretty quickly you pass out from that. And Dude, we can do that for way cheaper in a garage with a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't think it takes... I think it takes slightly longer than 10 minutes because of the space. Yeah. But, you know, you're on the right track. Fine, we'll get a small garage. <laughs> we'll get Next a small question. Garage. <laughs> we'll get a tent and we'll duct tape around the exhaust. Yeah. And the zipper. And, uh-huh. uh, yep. <laughs> you're not special company with your snazzy pod. Sarco, okay? They're 3D printing one right now. <laughs> they have two. And they're 3D printing a third. So. That's wild. Yeah. That makes it even more futuristic. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're just. We're over here. We're 3D. We're using machines to fucking make it, bro. We're we're 3D printing death machines. (laughs) Yup. I really, I really hope that like someone has a sense of humor and they put like a 25 cent like slot on the side (laughs) of the machine. Oh man. Can you imagine? That'd be wild. 
I remember uh, when I was in high school, I was in a debate, and I had to do a uh, a speech on assist- physician-assisted suicide and why it should be allowed. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Nebraska's um, <laughs> wild. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a... Because they give you, like, a fucking prompt, and it's a nationally uh, available list of things to talk about. Okay. So you, like, pick from the topic. Because this is when I was doing... I don't remember what it was called, what the type was, but it was it was at the one I normally did, which was public forum, which is like two people, two people, and then you guys just debate each other. Yeah. This one was like I stand up and give a, a presentation to like fifty people. Yeah. Or give a I've, speech to fifty people and everybody kind of votes on it. I mean, in certain circles I've been called a master debater. Yeah, I, yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to give this uh speech to uh I mean it's a group of peers all from Nebraska, so it's okay. a largely conservative demographic group of people who are like, wow, you can't just kill people for fun. And I'm like, well, there's, you know, there's extenuating circumstances. Like, it's not people who are like, I had a bad Thursday. So, yeah, going to the pod. Like, it's like this person is in chronic pain and can't move. Yeah. And they've been in a bed for fucking five years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Where they're like, can you please just fucking take me out, bro? And they're like, no, sorry. Uh, we want you to stay alive and suffer. Thanks. Like, <laughs> dude, from a, like a, if you look, if you look at it from like a money standpoint, that I bet Switzerland saves a lot of like money in medical care because of stuff like that. Like people who, oh, for sure, who like are, they're never going to get off the machine. They're never going to get like the quality of life they're in right now is like the best it's ever going to get for them. And, if that person's like, all right, cool, it's time to check out. Yeah. They end up saving, I guarantee they save a lot of money in the long run, which I know is cold to say it like that, like cause people are more than just money, but it's, I'm just saying. Yeah. If you're fucking barely hanging on and you don't want to be here anymore, I feel like it's okay. Yeah. yeah. You can go if you want to go. Um, so in 2020, uh, 1,300 people in Switzerland were uh, dead from assisted suicide physician are, assisted suicide those are rookie numbers gotta pump them up well i mean switzerland's not that big either though <laughs> switzerland's population like fucking 14 welcome Four. to our uh, switzerland ted talk yep <laughs> population oh that's not a number <laughs> <laughs> um 8.6 billion so billion less million oh i was like holy wait a second that doesn't make any sense yeah, Switzerland has 8.6 million, which is less than Australia. Fun fact of the day, Sweden has 10.3 million. So, now you know. Wow, okay. So, less than fucking New York City. I can't remember what New York City is, but it's up there. LA's got to be up there, too. But anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Switzerland, making money moves. Or, well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be it's interesting to see like if that's more efficient, how many more people are likely to do it. You know, if it's like you know, where it's like so far removed from a uh a medical facility thing, like there's a lot of I don't know. I feel like there's a lot more hesitation in a situation like that where you're like, I gotta go to this place, I gotta tell them this yeah. is what I wanna do, you know. And maybe that's good. Maybe it prevents people from making a decision they are going to regret or whatever. But then, then again, I mean, there's these people who are like, "Fuck, just let me, let me just fucking do it on my own." Like, how many? There's 1,300 assisted suicides. But how many regular suicides can be attributed to medical issues? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I mean I understand that. I feel like as long as it's not someone who's just suffering from depression. That gets yeah. to do it because I think I feel like that's that that shouldn't be allowed to happen as long as it's just people who are like at the end of the road, you know, like yeah. Well, I think S- Switzerland, Sweden, all those countries have like really good uh, healthcare too. So it's like chances are you've probably gotten whatever you could get, like mental health wise too. Like they, you know, they take that shit seriously. But um. All right, one more health-related thing, and then I got a random story. Gotcha. Um, So this is the one I said you're going to be upset by. Uh, um, 
study finds vaping doubled the risk of erectile dysfunction in men aged 20 and older. Yes! <laughs> I mean, whatever, dude. My, It works just fine. Yeah. For now. But yeah. Whatever. Um, <laughs> healthy men between the ages of 20 and 65 who vape nicotine daily were more than twice as likely to report erectile dysfunction, commonly known as ED, than men oh. who did not vape. I, I'm glad that they added that at the end. They're twice as likely to report experience erectile dysfunction and they're like, than men who did not vape. Well, duh, that's what the whole fucking... <laughs> that whole sentence said that already. <laughs> fucking goddamn CNN. <laughs> uh, our analysis accounted for the cigarette smoking of participants, including those who were never cigarette smokers to begin with. Um... So that's, that's what I want to know. What's the what's the numbers for people who smokes like who smoke tobacco for ED? You know, so cool. is it like you're not you're not you're not twice as likely. You're one point three times as likely if you smoke cigarettes. Yeah, because um, if, it, if it's the same as smoking cigarettes, then whatever. Due to the presence of nicotine and thousands of other chemicals, c- smoking cigarettes can have the same effect on the systems of the body. That control blood flow to the male reproductive organs, as well as causing cancer. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, so, so basically, probably the same, I would say. And plus, we're living in the future. There's those sweet we pills that we got suicide machines. Now. We oh, got wait, suicide sorry. machines. <laughs> we got pills that that combat boner pills. ED. Yeah, we got yeah. boner. There we Get go. Them boner at a gas pills. station. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I just I just saw that and I was like, oh, I tell Shane, I can let him know. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Oh, all right. Um, well, good. So, last story that I got is a uh, university in Daytona may have had a mass shooting thwarted by students who reported concerning messages shared. Via a Snapchat group to campus security. Yeah. Ooh. How though? How could they know that? It was a Snapchat group message that they were involved in. And they were concerned about what was being relayed in the Snapchat group chat. Um, they went to this this individual. Um, let's see. I I don't. I can't see where it said like what they actually were concerned by. <laughs> so great. So uh, what you're telling me is you didn't do enough research and your story <laughs> is terrible. Wow. So police quickly made their way to this residence to apprehend this guy as he left his apartment. He was carrying a collapsible rifle magazine boxes a magazine and boxes of ammunition in his backpack. So yeah. doesn't look good. Uh, they had said he planned to go, go to a shooting range to practice with the firearm, which police said it appeared the 19 year old had sold his vehicle to purchase before making, uh, what the fuck? This sentence doesn't make any sense. It appeared the 19 year old had sold his vehicle to, oh, the or firearm practice with the firearm that he sold to purchase. God, that was, um, you know, when they put information in a comma section where it's yeah. like, that, could have been left out. Mm-hmm. That's what was it <laughs> before making his way to school. Like, um, they could have just added that he sold the vehicle, his car, to purchase the rifle. So, uh, uh, yeah. So as he made it, and had he made it to campus, obviously police feared he might have carried out a sinister plot. Yeah, based on social media messages found by the investigators. Um, I guess it was the last day before winter break, uh, finals, you know, a lot of exams, pretty packed, yeah, packed campus. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe he was just being a little stinker and making some jokes because that's what he said. He, uh, or well, one of the investigators said he might claim that it was all a joke and wasn't serious about it, but we don't find anything funny about discussing mass shooting on campus. It was for looking for attention. He got it. I mean, yeah. I feel like in this day and age, it's just like when you, you're you not allowed to say bomb on a plane. Yeah. You can't joke about mass shootings at a university. Yeah. 
I mean, it makes fucking sense. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, especially with, as you know, as many that have happened, like the second you start joking about it and someone finds out, then it becomes like someone's job for sure to look into it and make yeah. sure you're not a psychopath. Yeah. So I, I don't, like I said, I don't know where they're getting this information, but the police chief said that he had said once he was done at the firing range, he was going to campus to enact a Columbine. Oh, but like, shit. But they don't say where they found that. Like, in a Snapchat group chat, like, okay, but, like, what was the context? You know what I mean? Like, was it a fucked up group of people that say fucked up shit to each other all the time? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I still. mean, I, I would assume not, right? Like, if yeah, if somebody who was a part of that group chat was used to, like, really fucked up things being said, then yeah, I don't think yeah, anyone yeah. would have said anything. Yeah. So it says that police are uh, still working to establish an exact motive. However, uh department said uh, they had learned that he was in danger of failing classes and also cited for a traffic infraction while on campus on Wednesday, which, okay. That, Who doesn't I don't get feel like that's. Tickets? I don't feel like that's... The, the failing classes, maybe, I guess, yeah. depending on how super critical you are of yourself or maybe your parents are, but... Um, the parking ticket. Everybody gets fucking parking tickets. Listen here. Campus. I have never got a parking ticket, and if I was to get one, then I would you... clearly be pushed to my end, okay? Yeah. You've never been to college. You don't even know what colleges are, bro. <laughs> Your mom goes to college, dude. Oh. God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I got. That's all you got. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's 40, 40 minutes. What do you want from me, bro? More? Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Nope. <laughs> All right. I don't have yeah. the. I don't have the. <laughs> I got you. Oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> I don't want to do anything this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. So the Billboard top twenty. Uh, still at number one. Thirty by Adele. Dude, right. she's so hot. I love her. I've always loved her and will continue to do so until she marries me. <laughs> until she marries. Yep. All right. Uh, number two, Taylor Swift, uh, Red, Taylor's version. No. Get it out of here. Wait. Well, is the number one, is, what was the, uh, oh, hers was called 30. Never mind. I thought, I, for a second there, I thought Adele's album was Red and Taylor Swift was Red. And I was like, it's a conspiracy. Oh. We're not, we're not paying attention. <laughs> Look into it, okay? Um, number three, up from number nine, Christmas, Michael Booble. Booble. Michael Booble. Booble. Um, up from eight, at number four, Sour, Olivia Rodrigo. No. <laughs> and down from three to five, Certified Lover Boy by Drake. Whatever. Get out of here. And down from five to six, Dangerous to double up. <laughs> oh, it's still up there. Who cares? Ha <laughs> <laughs> um, And down from six to seven. Still over it by Summer Walker. Never no clue. heard that before. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, down from four to eight. An evening with Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic, Bruno Mars, and Anderson Pock. So. Um, up one spot at number nine. Highlights by The Weeknd. Is that a new album? I or is that the same the, album just back in the yeah, top it's 10? it's the same one because it's okay. 42 weeks on the chart. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, number 10, a Charlie Brown Christmas soundtrack. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, where's Mariah Carey at, dude? I'm a little um, upset. We're like deep 14. in. 14. Oh, okay. It's coming. Yeah, yeah it's dude, coming. Dude, next week it's in the top 10 for sure. Yep. 100%. <laughs> There's, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six in the 11 to 20 range. There's six Christmas albums in the 11 oh to 20. Oh my God. Yeah, they're dude, fucking coming. Yo, yeah, dude. Next week and then like the week of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next week and the week of Christmas, dude. Oh my God. Yeah. What's your prediction? How many Christmas albums are going to be in, in the, the top 10? In the top 10? Next week. Yeah. Uh, as Hallmark much as I hate to say it, dude, I'm going to say six. I'm going to say there's going to be six Christmas albums in the top 10. 
Okay. I'm going to say... I'm going to say five. Fine. Yep. All right. Well, I'm glad you uh, put a lot of work in today. Dude, I <laughs> I offered a lot of comedic value to the show this time, right? That's what I'm oh, here for. Oh, <laughs> If you like do it without you. <laughs> if you like watching the show and you want to help us out, then you head on over to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash walkpod W O K P O D. <laughs> I wonder if that was hurting us that we weren't enunciating our words I mean, you, you know, ever since we first spelled it out, the flood of paid subscribers is just the dam is broke, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and the the link tree is the same as walkpod. I just want to, I'm just, we're just swimming in money now. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see it, but I'm wearing gold underpants. So, <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm not wearing pants. So, well, yeah, there you go. Hashtag me too. Uh, um, if you don't want to give us money, you can always head over to YouTube and like and subscribe and leave a comment. If you yeah. own one of those stupid Apple products, you can get on to. <laughs> Get on to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Levi will definitely read it on the show. Yep. So it's like you're a part of us. Uh, let's see. Uh, we want to thank our friends. Kicking it with the Kellys. The Remedy Room. No New Friends Podcast. Uh, Dutch in Denver is doing them again, but... Sporadic or what? Sporadic. Yeah, he's yeah. he's back. Kind of. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. I forgot what I'm supposed to say. I've, I've had, had enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, bitches. Tip your bartender. <laughs>